Hi, today we're going to look at the uh, introduction to a plug flow reactor. Now a plug flow reactor is basically a tubular type of reactor typically where material enters and the material that enters together stays together and flows through in a plug until it leaves the reactor. What we can think of it almost is if you almost think of the material entering in a little bag for example, it would flow in there and then a little while later what we would find is say that material has moved along. So let's just take that out and then a little while later that material would have moved further along to say that point and then a little while later the material would have moved to there but notice all the material is staying together it's not mixing with material either before it or after it and if we wait a little bit longer the material will all exit the reactor and you would find it at the exit of the reactor like that. Now if we think of a, what that means in terms of concentrations in the reactor let's suppose we have a, react, a reaction where reactants goes to products like that R goes to P. And if we measured the concentration let's say of reactant that's R, that's the red, that's the black point over there, the, the black curve we would see it would start off high, in other words, here in the feed it would be high, and then it would gradually drop as the material flowed through the reactor, as shown over there, and that would be the exit concentration. The product would start off, concentration would start off being low at the entrance to the reactor there, and as the material flowed through the reactor and the reaction proceeded, you would make more and more product, and so the concentration would increase and be highest at the exit. Now let us, let us look at the maths behind the reactor. When we think of a tubular reactor, what we see is that the concentration changes with position along there. And we have to do a balance where we know what the concentration is, where it's uniform. And so we have to take a differential element. And that's what I've drawn over here. We take an element um, between a slice, if you like, between volume V and volume V plus delta V. The molar flow rate of A Entering that slice is Na at V, and the molar flow rate of A leaving that slice is Na at V plus delta V. And just to be clear, Na is the molar flow rate of species A, and it has units of moles per time. Now reactors, as we've said before on numbers of occasions, is basically just a mole balance. And now let us do a mole balance on A in that little element. So what we have a look, or what we say, is that the amount of A, the moles of A entering that element, which is Na at V, plus the moles of A formed in that element, and that would be the rate times the size of the element, because remember that's moles that are formed per unit time, per unit volume. So we multiply by the volume, delta V, which gives us the moles per time that are being formed, at moles of A that are being formed per unit time in there. That must be equal at steady state to the moles of A that are leaving that element, which is Na at V plus delta V. Uh, we can then look at rearranging that equation. And so what we do is we start writing it in differential form. And what we see is that we can write it as that rate A is equal to the molar flow rate of A leaving the element minus the molar flow rate of A entering the element divided by the volume of the element we now have it in the right form that we can look at the limit as delta V tends to zero. And we see the right-hand side there is then a differential, and we see that the rate of A is just equal to the rate of change of the number of moles of A with respect to volume. Now this equation over here is the general equation for a plug flow uh, reactor, and it has no assumptions in it. It always applies. We now look at the simplification if we have constant density. Now, remember what we've said in uh, previous lectures, is if the system has constant density, that's equivalent to the volumetric flow rate being constant. In other words, the volumetric flow rate entering the reactor is the same as the volumetric flow rate of the material entering the volume V, is the same as the volumetric flow rate leaving there, is the same as the volumetric flow rate leaving the reactor. So what we see, and putting that into words, 
remember the relationship between concentration and molar flow rate, is that the molar flow rate, Na, is the volumetric flow rate, Q, times the concentration. Remember, that's moles per time, that's uh, volume per time, and that's moles per liter. So that gives us the right units. And in a constant density case, what's very important is that Q is constant. We can now substitute this Na back into there, which we do. And what we then get is that, um, sorry, sorry, grab the wrong equation. Let's just put the right one in. The rate, which we said was equal to DNA dt, uh, DNA d volume, is equal to, we substitute our expression for Na into QCA um, times dV, and remember, Q is constant. So we can take it out the differential, and that's the expression that we put in earlier in the wrong place. And so that then becomes Q dCA dV. Um, and what you often find is this Q and V appearing um, like that in the re reactor equations. And a new variable is introduced where you take where we look at V divided by Q, and that is called residence time. Q is constant, so we can bring it back in under there. And this variable, V over Q, is residence time, which we give the symbol tau. And so the simple equation for a constant volume reactor system is this. So that is constant density. And tau is the residence time. And also what it is, uh, if you think what volume divided by flow rate is, it's the average time that the material will spend in the reactor. Next, what I'd like to look at is the relationship between the batch reactor and the plug flow reactor in a constant density system. Now, let's say we have a system and we have a feed of, say, concentration CA0, and remember, we're looking at constant density. And we do this, uh, we fill up a beaker with this material, and if we look how the concentration in the beaker changes with time, we see it starts off at CA0 and it decreases with time, and if we looked at the product, it would start off low and increase with time in the batch reactor. And we did the batch reactor in a previous case. And so what we've drawn here is the, how the concentration changes in a batch reactor with time at constant density. Now consider that we take the same feed material and rather do the experiment in a plug flow reactor. So we've got a feed of CA0, and we look at how the concentration changes with time. And what we see if we look at the two equations is that for a batch reactor at constant volume, is that for a batch reactor, the equation describing how the concentration changes with time is that rate A is equal to dCA dt. And for a plug flow reactor, the equation we have is that rate A is equal to d, excuse me, CA d tau. And notice, if you look at the two equations, that's the same rate. And this side looks the same, except on the batch side we have time, which is the actual time in the batch, that the material spends in the batch. And this is residence time. Residence time is changing along here, and it's related to V over Q, so it increases along here. And if you think thought of that idea we spoke about with the little packets, and if you'd had a little stopwatch in the packet, and you were watching it, and the stopwatch was zero here, and the time in the stopwatch increased in that packet, um, the residence time at that point would be the same as the time on the stopwatch, and that would have been the same as the time the material would have had spent in a batch reactor. And so what we can see is that um, the concentration profile in a batch reactor with time is the same as the concentration profile in a plug flow reactor. And in fact, if we drew the curve and we replaced the T with tau, we would get exactly the same 
profile. But remember, this is only true in a constant density system. So if you're designing your system and you've done the experiment in the batch reactor and you get the conversion you want after 10 minutes, you could then immediately say, I can now design a plug flow reactor with the same residence time as the time that we had in the batch reactor, in other words, with a residence time of 10 minutes.